don't really want to get up and get out of bed. Yeah, I get up and get out of bed. I don't really want to work out. I work out. I, I really don't want to hammer on a project. I hammer on the project. Now, as an overall rule, I do not like procrastination. You need to get things done. But if you are going to rest, that is one thing that you should procrastinate on. That's the one thing I want you to put off until tomorrow. Now, these could be signals that you need some time off. And those signals might be right. They could be correct. But don't take today off. Don't, don't give in to the immediate gratification that is whispering in your ear. Shut that down. Do not listen to that little voice. Instead, go through the motions. Lift the weights. Sprint the hill. Work on the project. Get out of bed. If you only have 24 hours in a day, your success is dependent upon how you use the 24. You gotta hear me, people talk about Oprah Winfrey, you know, Ted Turner, Warren Buffett, listen to me, I don't care how much money you make, you only get 24 hours in a day. And the difference between Oprah and the person that's broke is Oprah uses her 24 hours wisely. That's it, listen to me, that's it, you get 24. I don't care if you broke, you grew up broke, I don't care if you grew up rich, I don't care if you're in college, you're not in college, you only get 24 hours, and I blew up literally. I went from being a high school dropout to selling 6,000 books in less than six months. What happened? My 24 hours. I was like, okay, Eric, you gotta get a grip on your 24 hours because you're about to be broke for the rest of your life. And that's all I need you to do for me. I can tell you all about your life if you just write down your 24 hour schedule for me and you let me look at it. I can tell you where you're gonna be in five years. I can tell you where you're gonna be in 10 years. I can tell you where you're gonna be in 20 years if you keep that schedule. I had a teacher in eighth grade. Eighth grade tell me I wasn't gonna make it in high school. Eighth grade, I had a teacher telling me that foolishness. And what did I do? I proved them right. I went to high school wilding out. Ninth grade year, wild out so bad, that school kicked me out. They was like, you know, we can't even take this no more. Kick you out. Go to another school. I completely flunked that. Go to a third school and finally begin to get my act together. I'm proving everybody who did not believe in me right. And the few people who did believe in me, I'm proving them wrong. Again, we're dealing with it matters of the heart now. A lot of times we behave in the way we behave because we don't feel like we got worth or value. We don't really recognize the heritage of who we are and what we can do. So we just on that, I'm just gonna do whatever and get a couple laughs. But when you recognize how great you are, when you recognize that champion that's inside you, you'll say, you know what, I got more to give. There's more to life than this right here. I deserve better, you deserve better. And then you'll say, you know what, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna prove everybody who didn't believe in me wrong. And the few people who do believe in me, I'ma prove them right. And when you do that, everything inside your life changes. I just start saying, before I make decisions, I just start saying, okay, is this gonna make my mama proud or all the people that's hating on me, is this gonna make them say, see, I told you. I'm in India speaking. I found out the culture in India, there in Bangalore where I was, has the highest suicide rate because if these kids do not do well in high school, they know they won't go to college and they know for the rest of their life they'll end up in poverty and they said, I'd rather die than be in poverty. That's what you call desperation. But you gonna settle for whatever the world gives you? You gonna settle for living how your mom and dad live now? I'm telling y'all, my young friends, you ain't gotta settle for that.
Most people think that the people that are at a very high level in society are cut from a different cloth. They think that they're, they're, they're literally a different breed than them and that, they're, and that they can't get those things. So that's kind of interesting, right? And uh, it's always kind of a shocker to, to have the, uh, the, the myth of that person burst. But see, here's the thing. Although we're not cut from a different cloth, the fact that I mastered consistency is the difference. And most people will never do that. No one wants you to succeed, right? Only your mom. And even your mom doesn't want you to succeed because she's afraid you're not gonna call her back. Your brain doesn't want you to be a big success. Your brain just wants to keep you alive. All your brain wants you to do is just pump out one or two kids so the DNA can continue on. That's it. Your brain will trick you. You are your own worst enemy. I know that if I fail to do that, that I am not instilling those habits that's gonna have, that's gonna have a big picture long-term goal. Dudes, talent is overrated, homie. There's no price too great for me. There's, there's nothing too great. I would die for, for my dreams. You know what I'm saying? I'm willing to risk it. Uh, there's, there's nothing too great. There's no amount that I'm, that I'm not willing to go. You can accomplish anything you want, man, if you're willing to do it, right? But again, you'll realize that what you think you are is not what you are. You become something else. You, be you literally become something else. If you want to be someone who, who's tireless, you cannot be tired down, you, you'll become something else. So you don't have the, those limitations that a normal human being has. You don't have that because you, be you become something else. You become something that embodies certain things that, that you're trying to move forward. You'll go to any length. You, so you're not gonna get tired. Because that because dude, at that point you have God on your side. That's not even you anymore, dude. Big. It's like, you know how? What I do is I focus on maybe one or two or three things at a time, and then I just do it. And then I get that done, and then I do the next thing. And then I get that done, and then I do the next thing. No one's gonna put you on. You got you have to put yourself on. No one's gonna put you on. So you, so you make that choice. You just do your small tasks and you do it. But see, no one wants to hear that. Success is about just quiet, little actions. Getting rid of anything that's unnecessary. Success is like a quiet, daily set of tasks. Real small, real, real small. It's very quiet. It's a, it's, a, it's a very quiet process where you're just drawing your state from within yourself, doing these like simple little tasks, but finding love in those simple little tasks. It's not this big rah-rah speech where you do this one thing and something big happens. I'm tired. I don't want to do it. And I got a million reasons not to do it. But what I do is I make the choice that I say, if I can't make myself go do this, how am I going to live my dreams? I have found that if I miss one day, I'll miss every day. People are always wondering what the next step in life is. And I say, life's a little bit like a maze, you know? Until you walk down one hallway and try to open the door, you don't know if it's a dead end or not. And people are trying to sit back, and that's where the procrastination comes in and look real far down the hallway. And I'm like, just walk. Small and steady wins the race. What's the fastest way to change your life? For me, I think it's understanding how to set up daily routines with alternating brain and body training and uh, killing procrastination. The little win with your family when you feel like watching TV sets you up for another win the next day. A little win of getting up at five o'clock and running your morning routine sets you up for a habit of a 5 a.m. club morning routine. Small daily improvements over time will lead you to stunning results. It, it comes down to this, I think you have to work hard 
Like, just so everybody knows, we haven't gotten into this subject yet. Working hard is the cost of entry to anything. You know zero people that are successful that don't work their face off. You know zero people. Now, they may have money, because mommy and daddy made money and gave it to them, but people that actually built their own success, you know zero people that have had success that did not put in obnoxious amounts of work. What's the most important key to success? I think it's hunger. It's, it's not getting satisfied. A hunger that doesn't go, a hunger to learn, a hunger to grow, a hunger to serve, a hunger to give, a hunger to create breakthroughs. Most people are hungry until they make a certain amount of money and then they get comfortable. And there's nothing wrong with that, it's, but it's not about the money. It's not about the business. It's about your growth. Because every one of us either grows or dies. People ask me all the time, what does it take to be happy? I say one word, progress. Progress equals happiness. Because achieving a goal feels good for how long? A week, a month, three months? And then there needs to be something else. And the reason for something else is because you got to grow. Imagine a conversation with your future self in that let's imagine that the you of 20 years from now shows up at your doorstep. And that you is stronger, smarter, wiser, wealthier, healthier, happier. And that you shows up at your door and it looks at your life and it looks you in the eye if that future you was going to give you advice on what to stop, what to start. What's the first thing they would tell you to be or do? Take a step back right now and think about who we all admire in the world, right? They're all people that punted the system there are people that practice singing since they were five. There are people that shot 10,000 basketballs every morning. It's always that. It's always that. 99% of the people right now that are listening to this are playing in the middle. They're playing in a game that was structured for them. They're risk adverse, they fear, and most importantly, they fear what other people think. I believe that we're all born with lots of goodness in us. But life throws curveballs. Life, the, the, the ambition of being alive helps us dream. And if you've been given a dream, don't discount that because you're not good enough yet. Develop yourself, weaponize yourself, teach yourself to be so good at something that is necessary to serve in the area of your dream that now you're never even thinking about your comfort zones. Your comfort zone is irrelevant. What matters is what are you trying to do with your life? How are you trying to contribute? The one thing that discipline definitely does help you with is it, it helps you get things done. And when you get things done, when you, you, you actually do things, you, 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 you have more success. If you have more success, and sometimes a big part of success is just not being lazy and just doing it. Yeah. Just get, that's like 90% of it is just showing up. Get there and start working. Like, you're not going to feel perfect every day. If it's pretty much the same with everybody that if, that actually gets good at something. You, you get, there's got to be those days you push through. And they're, they're probably going to be more numerous than the days you don't. And so the benefit of discipline in my eyes has always been that through discipline, I get things done. Those days when I'm tired or worn out or just basically sick of the grind. What, what do I do on those days? I go anyways. I get it done even if I'm just going through the motions. I go through the motions. So yep, you're in school, yes. You probably are getting grades, etc. But if it's not meaningful to you, if it's not important to you, then you're not gonna make it a priority. So what you have to do is find out how can you make it meaningful? How can you make it purposeful? How can, how can you make it stick? And when you can find that out, I promise you, you'll get up early, you'll get there first, and you'll do whatever it takes to make that goal a reality. So for me, no such thing as procrastination is a such thing as it's not a priority to you. This is kind of hard to understand, but sometimes you can try so hard at something. Sometimes you can be so, so prepared 
and still fail. And with every time you fail, it's painful, it causes sadness. And especially as I saw last night, it causes disappointment. I've often said a man's character is not judged after he celebrates a victory by, by, but by what he does when his back is against the wall. So no matter how great the setback, how severe the failure, you never give up. You never give up. You pick yourself up, you brush yourself off, you push forward, you move on, you adapt, you overcome. That is what I believe. Everybody here, everybody watching, I won't be stopped. I can't be stopped. You're either committed or you aren't. You're either willing to do everything it takes whatever that might be, or you aren't. You either are willing to, to go through hell and high water and fire and brimstone to get to your goals, or you aren't. Work on yourself. Work on your focus. You cannot stop. You gotta work. The problem with you is you see difficult as something negative. I want you to see difficult differently. Are you hearing me? I need you to push through that stuff. Push through it. You can't get through it. The more you go through, the more difficult it is, the more challenging it is. Listen to me, the harder it is. Are you hearing me? The more challenging it is, all you're doing, baby, is building muscles. In life, you're either going to a storm, in a storm, or you coming out. It's a part of life. There's no way around it. So just be careful not to allow the trials and the tribulations to consume you. I don't care if you're a billionaire. I don't care if you're a CEO of one of the most important companies. I don't care if you're an entertainer. Like, I don't care who you are. You can go to the moon. We all have problems. What I'm trying to tell you is this though. Problems are a part of life. But guess what? They're not like. It's not going to be easy. There are moments when you're going to doubt yourself. There are rough times that are going to come, but they have not come to stay. No matter how bad it is or how bad it gets, you've got to make it your personal business to make it happen. For me, it, it has been the, to be that guy that does what people say can't be done, you know? And I think it started with uh, trying to please my mother and trying to please my grandmother. And they always wanted higher for me. They always wanted more for me. And it got to the point that I wanted to be something. I wanted to be somebody. And it, it made me uh, choose certain roles. It, it made me turn down certain roles. Um, there is more, more than an image that I want to project. I want to be the person that is the first person there and the last person to leave. That's who I want to be because I think that the, the road to success is through commitment and through the strength to drive through that commitment when it gets hard. And it is going to get hard and you're going to want to quit sometimes, but it'll be colored by who you are and more who you want to be. I definitely found that uh, wanting to be an actor stems from wanting to be somebody. My mom wanted me to be a truck driver because <laughs> that would mean I'd make $24,000 a year if I went to truck masters and that would be twice what my father made. And she thought that would happen, but something inside of me said, I don't want to drive a truck. There's something else that matters more to me. And I decided I was not gonna go for money instead of passion. And uh, 
the rewards have been pretty amazingly better than being a truck driver. It's not bad being a truck driver, it's just not what I was after. And I, I look back and one of the things that helped me was my original teacher, Jim Rohn, who was a personal development speaker I went to hear when I was 17. He said something the first time I heard him and he said, you know, it's really simple. If you want life to change, you got to change. If you want life to be better, you've got to get better. It's the only way it happens. And luck will show up for people and it'll leave them. But if you're constantly improving who you are and what you give, game over. See if you can find some ways to multiply your value to the marketplace. And he said your income will immediately start to change. See, if you go through life holding back, and most of us do, most of us, if we ask ourselves, have we done all we can do? Most of us will have to answer, no, we haven't. We've been holding back. We have ideas that we don't act on, things we want to do. We're afraid to take chances. We go through life trying to seek security and not coming outside of our comfort zone. And we take most of our stuff with us to the grave. Up until then, I was hoping that the economy would change. I was hoping that my company would change. I was hoping that my paycheck would change. I was hoping that circumstances outside would change. And then here's what I found out. It isn't going to change. So then my question was, if it isn't going to change, how will my life ever change? And here's what my teacher taught me. When you change, when you change, everything will change for you. And I'm saying that the fact that you're still here, that you're still breathing, you've got some more work. And you owe it to yourself. You owe it to yourself. So when you get up in the morning, that you can look yourself in the face and say, hey, I'm living my life on my terms. Change a question, change your life. When it comes to planning your life, I want to get you to learn to ask three questions now. The question you want to ask yourself is, what do I want? What's my outcome? What's my result? The word RPM, the first one is to get you focused on the target. The target is not the activity. The activity can change. It's what the, what's the result I'm after. If you know exactly what it is you really want, what you desire, what you're really after, clarity is power. The more clear you are and specifically what you want, the faster your brain can get you there. But if you're generally saying things like, what do I want? Well, you know, I want more money. Fine, here's a dollar, get out of here. Whether you get the outcome or not, whether you get that result, will be based first, do you have clarity? And the second thing is, whether you got enough emotional juice to keep going after it when things don't work out. Did you achieve the outcome? Yeah, when you're that general, you may be, you think you're not getting your goal, you are. The way you language your goal, the way you think about it, you're receiving it. You know, you know, I, you know, I want to feel a bit better. I want to lose some weight. Fine, you lost a pound, you're done. When you get better, everything will get better for you. And that's where I picked up that phrase, for things to change, you've got to change. You don't have to change the marketplace. You don't have to change the marketing plan. You don't have to change the economy. You don't have to change countries. You don't have to change circumstances out there. All you've got to do is look within and see if you can change yourself for the better. And as you change, things will start to change for you. What's the result I'm after? What's the ultimate result? What do I want out of this week, out of this thing, out of my business, out of my life, out of, for my body? Don't concern yourself too much with how you're going to achieve your goal. Leave that completely to a power greater than yourself. All you have to do is know where you're going. The answers will come to you of their own accord. Here's my best advice. Welcome all experiences. You never know which one is going to turn everything on. Are there going to be some moments when you want to give up? Yes. Will there be some moments when it's going to seem like it's impossible? The pain that you're experiencing, the disappointment that you're experiencing, that you're going to say it's not worth it? Yes, that's, that's going to be right there for you. It's, it's going to be in your face telling you to go back. When we think about changing our lives, usually that means changing your behaviors, retraining yourself, getting new habits, going out and trying them out and changing your life. This is about changing your thoughts and then your life will change. Change your thoughts, change your life. 
Benjamin Disraeli said, nothing can resist a human will that will stake its existence on its purpose. Shortly put, I'll do it or die. Know that all you have to do is hold your goal before you. Everything else will take care of itself. And I can tell you that it doesn't make any difference what age you are, whether you're a teenager watching this, or whether you're someone uh, in your 60s, 70s, 80s, or anywhere along the way, you can make that change. Every thought, every feeling, every emotion you experience in this lifetime is shaped by beliefs and values. All of your life is controlled by decisions you make. Decisions about what to believe, decisions about what to feel, decisions about what to do. And most of us are on automatic pilot letting the world trigger us instead of taking back control of our life. And when you do that, just think of it this way. Anything you want to change, you want to change your body, you want to change your career, your business, your relationship. What to do requires the right strategy. If you want to lose weight and keep it off, you can't obviously just throw your pendulum and go on some silly diet. You got to know the things that are going to give you lasting results. So we teach those strategies. But some people even know what to do, but they don't do it. And why are we able to get people to do it, to follow through? Because 80% of success in anything, my friends, is psychology. And 20% is the mechanics. What that means is there's how to do stuff and there's why to do stuff. How to do it is not that complex. And if you really learn from somebody who knows those refined distinctions, they can, they can show you those tipping points, those things you can do where in the least amount of time you get the biggest result. As you look at yourself as a business operator, as you look at yourself as an entrepreneur, as you look at yourself as a person that want to make a mark with your life, that want to leave a legacy, you've got to be hungry. It's better to be prepared for an opportunity and not have one than to have an opportunity and not be prepared. You want to find people who master that because success leaves clues. And that's the same thing I'm suggesting to you. Whatever area that you want to go in, in this finances, in business, insurance industry, whatever area that you're interested in, find the people who are mastering that and follow their example. Watch your relationships. They're nourishing relationships and they're toxic relationships. Nourishing relationships, they bring the best out of you. They inspire you. Toxic relationships, they drain you. People that are hungry are willing to do the things today others won't do in order to have the things tomorrow others won't have. People that are hungry believe, always strive to get on top in life because it's the bottom that's overcrowded. People that are hungry know if you want to be successful you must be willing to do the things today others won't do in order to have the things tomorrow others won't have. If you do what is easy your life will be hard. Complain, point at your circumstances, give up your power, blame the government, blame the economy. If you do what is easy, your life will be hard. But if you do what is hard, your life will be easy. It's hard to make a radical change in your behavior. It's hard to take ownership. It's hard to swallow the bitter pill that wherever you find yourself, at some point in time, you made an appointment to be there. That's hard. That's hard. If you do what is easy, your life will be hard. If you do what is hard, your life will be easy.